make sure that we have this uh, equipment. And uh, the moment you intubate the patient, for sure you have to put the patient on a mechanical ventilator. So you will need your mechanical ventilator in advance. You have to make sure that you have selected the desired mode. You have checked if it's working. You have uh, 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 calculated the, I mean, you have also, apart from the mode, you also have uh, select the parameters correctly based on the status of the patient. And uh, also sometimes the machine might fail. So what will be your backup plan? So your backup should be the ambu bag connected to the oxygen and start doing manual, manual ventilation. And all in all, you should never ever intubate the patient if you don't have the suction apparatus. So you have to check your suction machine and make sure that it's working. You have your suction catheters in advance because this patient, most of them, will, they might have a full stomach, they might vomit in and rejected. So you need to do a suction. So make sure that you have all this uh, equipment. So Kevin, can we move forward, please? So basically, we have just finished the first part of this presentation, which was about the, the setup and the definition of some terminologies, the ratios and whatever. So now let us see the indications for ICU admission. So uh, the indications for ICU admission and our practice change action item will be the, to list just the common indication for ICU admission. So because of the time, uh, I'll just, I will not, uh, waiting for your response, I will just say that the main indication as Rebecca said is monitoring. We have to understand that the main reason why the patient is admitted in ICU is first is for close monitoring. That's number two, that's the first indication, close monitoring. And apart from uh, monitoring is when we want to do some procedures, there's some these bedside procedures which cannot be done in the world, like arterial blood gas analysis, when we want to put arterial line, we want to put a central line, you want to put uh, other, 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 other invasive procedures. These are the, uh, the main reason why this patient admitted in ICU. And remember some of this patient may uh, need organ support, as Rebecca said, uh, they will need either respiratory support, they will need a circulatory support. They will need inotropes to support their blood pressure. They will need a mechanical ventilator like Mr. T uh, because maybe they are not doing well in non-invasive uh, non, uh, measures. They will need, maybe these are the patients who might have multiple organ failure or multiple organ dysfunction. They will need uh, uh, support. They might have in sepsis. So these are the main indication. We have a plenty of indications but the main reason uh, are those which I've just said, and um, we will share the document in the in the chat line. As you can see, there are links, several links which have been shared. You can just go through them and see, uh, uh, and you, you get the details of of all those indications. But remember, monitoring is the main reason why the patient is in ICU. Right, Kevin? Can we go? Can we proceed, please? So now, as I said, we have Dr. We have Dr. Gibbons, who is currently doing his Master of Science in Critical Care. So Dr. Gibbons, please, can you take us through the uh, remaining part of this presentation, which basically is what is ICU now. The most, what we've already spoken maybe, are some politics in ICU, but this now, when you have to, to anticipate complications, when you know how to manage the complications, now you, you, you can just say that you can attend this patient in ICU. Please, Dr. Gibbons, we have 20 minutes to, to, to finish the presentation. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Saria and Dr. Rebecca for the uh, introduction all the way to where we are. So we have already the patient who is now already in the ICU and uh, we have to see uh, what about the stay in the ICU? Is it always going to be that smooth or maybe it could be bumpy and rough? Well, Sometimes it can be bumpy and rough. That's why we talk about complications in the ICU. So we have uh, uh, several, and we can look at our case uh, before we proceed to that one. We can check that Mr. T is now being uh, beginning to look very uh, fatigued. He is less awake. He has labored breathing, and his color is looking more dusky or cyanotic. So basically, we can think so it's cyanotic. He's asking for help to breathe, so he cannot breathe at all. Uh, heart rate 102, BP 9751, respiratory rate of 37. 
temperature of 37.5 degrees Celsius and SpO2, it keeps on dropping while he was already putting 15 liters non rebreather face mask. So the question is, what's next? You are in non rebreather 15 liters, 100% oxygen. And still now, you cannot even uh, breathe well. And the SpO2 is, keeps dropping down. The blood pressure, if you look, it keeps dropping down. The SpO2 rate, it was 20 something. Now we are already in 37. So what next? You can put in your chart and the, we can proceed in uh, just maybe less than 20 seconds. What's next? 15 liters, cyanotic now, you cannot even breathe. Pressure is dropping, respiratory rate is continuing going high, and the saturation more and more and more. So we don't see a yet any response, but what we see here, somebody who cannot even breathe, already cyanotic is quite severe, pressure is dropping. I thank you from private who thinks that we can intubate. And I think we all agree that for this particular stage up to where we are, 15 liters non breather, you could say maybe you'll think of uh, CPAP, but honestly speaking, CPAP non breather, if you're already in uh, non breather 15 liters per minute and then you're doing good, high chances you will fail also in CPAP. So for me personally, I would also not hesitate to intubate this particular patient we are already been having a dynamic instability. So probably soon you will be going to having a shock. So I agree with intubation right away, put the patient in the mechanical ventilator. We can scroll up to uh, Kevin. Can we go up, Kevin? Thank you. So, and we can see even what has been done there. The option was to uh, intubate him and then they inserted different uh, lines and catheters for monitoring urine, for monitoring output, center line for frequent sampling and they uh, can monitor even central venous pressures. And then you'll see uh, how are you going, how are you doing with your patient with all those invasive uh, lines inserted in there. So now, we could talk about some few, few, few complications that may be a little bit much more common. Uh, with regard to the case that we have COVID suspect, pressure is dropping, desaturation, cannot breathe, now already intubated. So COVID, we know, is uh, one of the diseases that uh, disturbs the pulmonary system very massively. We can end up with the LRDS. We can end up with shock, a septic, a septic shock. We can... Uh, end up with even uh, cardiac arrest in the worst case scenarios. Now, in between these uh, times that severe illness and avoiding complications, we try to monitor things. We said we are putting central line. Now with the central line, it can come also problems along associated with it, central line associated uh, infections. You have inserted in a urinary catheter. It's for the good. We need to know the output. But with it, if it is not taken care of very well or it is left there to stay for too long, again, urinary uh, catheter associated infection, the cauti. So every single thing that we are doing in these critical patients, in form of invasive measures to try to monitor, they can also come along with their own complications if uh, we are not keen enough to take care of those invasive equipments that we're putting in these patients. And uh, the other thing that is very common, we know for sure, they will be bedridden. You have intubated them, maybe paralyzed them sometimes. They cannot move, they're totally mobile. Then along with that, DVT risk becomes too high. The, the disease itself, the sepsis is a risk for DVT, but mobility, on top of that, if you don't have good physiotherapists along or cover any pharmacotherapy with heparins, or well, DVT will be another big problem. So, in short, complications are there. There can be a lot of them, and they can be associated either directly with our care or indirectly with whatever we are doing. So can we scroll up a little bit, Kevin? So as we can see in this particular picture, it's a lot. Uh, 
that Mr. T who will be put into mechanical ventilator, we have to think about ventilator shredded events. One of it is ventilator shredded pneumonia, especially when they are spread. So catheter shredded you know, tract infection, the county, sometimes medication errors can happen and somebody can get uh, adverse reactions from the medications. Passed a, a, a central line associated with uh, bloodstream infections. We are putting a central line, Mr. T, and uh, somehow, some way, with hypoxia, confusion can come in. You need sedation to make sure that these patients are doing very good and they are synchronized, and the ventilator is working in synchrony with them so that everything is going on fine. You can find that we are over sedating them without knowing, and then they stay in the bed too long, and then immobility, and then DVT comes in. Delirium. The same benzodiazepines, medications that are commonly used for medication for sedations, too much of them again is the problem, which is why we are being asked at least to try to prevent. Not every single day you sedate them 24 hours, every single time. No, you have to give intermittent sedations. Every single day you assess for the readiness to stop sedations. So today you have sedation, maybe tomorrow you stop and observe. The day after tomorrow you have sedation, like that, not continuously. We have gone with uh, DVT, pulmonary embolism risk already, resistance in terms of antibiotics is quite uh, often and happens very often. We see sometimes even resistance to very uh, broad, uh, strong antibiotics, carbapenems, miropenems, vancomycin resistance, and trococcus. They are there and it would be challenging. So we should be able to use our antibiotics very appropriately use get to duration and dosage as well. Not to overuse or give them when they are not even needed. Not every single patient will need antibiotics. So if they are not needed, never use them. So malnutrition is something which can come along again if we are not keen with the feeding. If somebody's intubated and they can't eat by themselves. NGTs comes in sometimes uh, parental, but dental is best and preferred. Within them, if you are not calculating very well the nutrients, well, Malnutrition can come in. With malnutrition, you compound again the problem on the patient. Recovery takes too long, and even the uh, option of them making it to a better uh, physical function status post ICU, it could be even worse. So, malnutrition can be there, but we have to know we need multidisciplinary team. Nutritionists should be uh, consulted for that. Stress health and prophylaxis, always, always to every single patient who is critically ill because one of the things which happens is high uh, acid production and the gastric is most of the time empty. So we need to prevent it always. GPIs, very good ones, use them. And uh, if we cannot control organ dysfunction, we have seen Mr. T was hypoxic. Now if we leave hypoxia, well, we know what could happen, especially from the brain, the kidney, the lungs, the liver. So they can start to be abused, you know, can decrease, and then seek out an acute kidney injury, which could even progress to what you will fail. I mean, here, nurse the infection, sepsis, but and multiple organ dysfunction, which will be lifelong comorbidities. So we have to be keen. We have to think in terms of Broadway, in terms of the whole patient in totality. Things that we see them and things that we cannot see them now, but they might happen later. So we have to think in that modality. Thank you, Kevin. I think we can scroll up a little bit. And uh, now we have seen those complications that they are there. They can happen either uh, spontaneously or maybe atrogenically by our own care that we are giving. And from that care, either by knowing or without knowing, then the patient ends up getting a complication. Now. Is there anything that we can do to try to prevent them? Certainly, yes. Yes, there are things which are called bundle cares or care bundles. These are just a group, a group, a group of multiple, multiple small things that you can do single, one by one. But when you combine them and do them together, they have been proved to have a very huge and better outcome in patients in terms of mortality and morbidity reductions. So multiple things that are combined in one specific uh, sort of document as a full package of care. And with that, if we do follow them, they seem that in the critical ill patient, they give a very good response in terms of reduction of morbidities and mortalities. So 
what are some of them that we know? If anybody knows any sort of a bundle that's going to be using ASU, but put in your chat box for maybe 20, 30 seconds, any sort of bundle that you have seen that you have heard about that can be used in the critical ill patient. Or you can even speak straight, no problem, even if you cannot write. So there's a response in the chart. Uh, this was the previous one, we to bed, so this is the new one. So Kevin, I think we can scroll up because of the time factor and then see some of them. So the infection treatment bundle, okay, great. So for example, thank you. But here we said Mr. T had to be uh, inserted a central line. So in the central line insertion, you can't just go there and insert like someone who is just coming out of nowhere and then you put the central line and then you go. You should follow some procedures, uh, quite aseptic techniques. So as it has been shown there, you should salary wash your hand. And this is one of the most and number one effective measure which have been proved to decrease the rate of infection transmission in ICU. Do you like us to care bundle? Thank you, Dr. Amara. Yes, thank you. And uh, wash your hands putting your sterile gloves, as you can see, fully surgical draping. And from there, you cover the patient as well. So you drape them. Then from after draping the patient, you have to clean the area that you're going to insert your central line. After that, you will insert line. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Navala. This is uh, one of them, central line care bundle. This is the one that you are talking about. Thank you. And uh, after cleaning with the chlorohexidine as the area that you're going to insert your central line, you insert your center line, cover it much more so aseptically, make sure that it is visible with transparent uh, plasters if possible, so that you can see if there's any sign of localized infection as the puncture area is happening. We Kamagozi, now plaster may indeed combine center line is chomoke, it could be too risky. You find pass. So make it clean, simple, and easy like that. Transparent plasters if you are able to have them. You'll be easy to see them in every single day assessment. And you have inserted in a central line, there'll be a day that Kama Itakiri Tumika, it's okay, full stop. There's no need for the central line, then the central line goes out. No need for urinary catheter, then the urinary catheter goes out. No need for any cannula, the patient now can take maybe even oral medications, you have to treat them to oral. Probably the cannula, which are not needed, should be getting out. So that should be uh, the uh, options to uh, check and consider when you are talking about care bundles. Those were in the ventilators. Uh, we can have uh, ABCDF ventilator, for example, liberation bundle, which talks about different things in there. Hey, we can go up, Kevin. Uh, let's go up. We have talked already about catheter automatically as a couch bundle. And uh, you can see in the screen the way it is. If you don't need it, remove it. But in session, again, aseptic technique, regular assessment, every single thing you put. And then staff should be trained on how to handle these uh, lines or invasive uh, equipment that we put in the patients. We can go up. I was uh, introducing a little bit on. Uh, so here, sepsis is something which is very common, and we see it day to day. And even Mr. T is starting to drop the to drop the blood pressure. Maybe he's going into a septic shop. So bundles which can be done, they have been divided into specific time. For example, within one hour, somebody will special will septic in front of us. We have to do at least a certain set of things to increase their chances of survival. And here. We know usually we need to take uh, lactate levels from our central lines. We take samples, at least several of them. And uh, we uh, have to administer fluid boluses immediately. Then after that, only then we can try to administer broad spectrum antibiotics while we have already taken the samples for the cultures. And then after that, if there are no response again to the uh, Fluid Ebola says you are allowed to proceed with the application of vasopressors within the first uh, hour. Then after first hours, for the next 24 hours, you have to have specific targets. They say you have to have specific urinary output at least 0.5 mils per kilo per hour. Central line targets at least 8 to 10. You need to have temperature in a targeted range. You need to have map 
in a targeted range at least above 65, so that at least you are going to uh, support your patient in a much more way to make sure that the outcomes is going to be better. Thank you. And uh, we can go up, uh, scroll up, Kevin. And uh, I was talking about the uh, ABCDF bundle. You could look at it, but basically this is a bundle which is used for patients who are intubated in the mechanical ventilator to liberate them from the mechanical ventilator. You have A, B, C, D all the way to E and F. Uh, every single letter presents one single thing from assessment of pain and treatment of it, breathing trials, sedation, stopping, and the uh, uh, choice of sedation, choice of analgesics, and the exercise, family involvement, all of those things in one single thing that can help quite uh, in removing patients from the mechanical ventilators very fast and very easily in a better way. And I've seen one question from uh, Dr. Kamal. I think we can answer it after we are done with the, the last portion. So there's a last question here, which is PICS, P-I-C-I-C-S. This is stands for post-intensive care syndrome. If you have ever seen it, uh, it is something that is talked in these days. It is something that is, is discussed in these days. It should be thought about. It's a syndrome. Now, this syndrome comprises of several uh, presentations in several few domains. So these domains involve uh, physical uh, impairment, involve uh, cognitive impairment, and the psychiatric uh, manifestations. So the patient from their stay in ACU they are prone to end up with this post intensive care syndrome. In, the, in terms of cognitive, they will have memory deficit, inattention, uh, inability to recall some things, uh, those sort of things, and the very low thinking. In terms of physical disorders, this one is represented mostly uh, in terms of pulmonary system, is affected very much. Neurological also can be affected, and uh, muscular system, very weakness. They stay in the ICU. We don't give proper physio, debilitated for a long time, contractures. Once they are out of ICU, they end up with massive uh, muscular weaknesses. And uh, in terms of anxiety, some people may recall every single thing that has been done in the ICU. They are intubated. Everybody is putting them every now and then. Everybody is saying something. They cannot sleep. So they will call all those stress and the memories can come back. So they will be uh, uh, very anxious in form of traumatic stress disorders. All of those things, they can happen. And this uh, post-intensive care syndrome does not only affect patients as far as it's concerned, it is also able to affect even the relatives. Relatives will not suffer cognitive, they will not suffer even physical impairment, but mostly of the relatives will suffer from uh, the anxiety or psycho uh, disorders, especially anxiety, depression, and even uh, very complicated grief. So they are, their relatives are lying there. They have no idea what is happening. Sometimes we don't even address them, so they don't know. can we Kalete pampa, kalete fluid. They bring things and go. They look at their patient is not even able to communicate to them. You a machine, a lot of lines are in there. So it can be quite stressful situation. It can be depressing to them. And the grief if it's not helped better with them, it can be quite complicated. So families should be involved. They should be involved in the planning. They should be involved in their management and they should be updated about what is happening with their patients or their relatives every single time so that to avoid they should not end up with this sort of syndrome as well uh, i think there is a uh, highlight which is floating in our in our uh, screen we can see it and i think it will be shared and everybody will have it so kevin you can continue up and we can continue up and continue to watch you there. So thank you. I think that was uh, it.
I think that was it. I don't think there was a need to go through that video. But uh, there was a question here, Saria, if you can hear me from Dr. Namala about the Crohexin availability in Tanzania. As we that we have it uh, available and we use it as one of our disinfectant, apparently. Oh, experience, uh, Saria, Rebecca, if you can hear me, there was one question there. Okay, thank you very About much. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Gibbons. Uh, I'm sure you've just completed your part. Maybe before we respond to Dr. Namala's question, maybe if we have another, if we have any, any questions, any uh, concern or anything which any participant want to share with us, we can just share experience. We have 10 minutes of discussion, questions, sharing experience. Sajaman, tunadaika kama kumi za kushauriana kwa mba, nini kifanyike, kuchanga motogena tunakutana nazo kwenye vituo vetu, as far as ICUK is concerned. Kama unaswali, unasema mba ulitaji kuelewa vizuru jaelewa. So this will be the right time to ask karibu ni jamani kwa mchango now you see you can unmute and then speak is rather than right in the chat box yes privatus karibu Viva, you can proceed uh, thank you dr saria for last chance uh, I appreciate the, the panelists that we have today. We, they, they gone through. <laughs> so thanks a lot. Thanks, uh, Gibbon. Thanks, uh, Rebecca. Also, Mr. Saria. And all those who have participated today. My concern is you have heard your uh, talks on that we have a plan, government plan on introducing those. Uh, I see you care on some district hospitals and uh, re uh, some regional hospitals. So uh, uh, if it, it will be good, it's better to try to, to share uh, those uh, uh, sessions that they always conducted some days so that uh, before introduction or before start of that care for those district hospitals. So people, some people, they or some anesthesia providers, whatever, or hospital provider, they can be aware of what is going on in ICU care and uh, everything. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Privatus. Uh, ah, um, percentage of, of course, I'm sure the government is on the plan of establishing this uh, ICU cares to the level of the district hospital. It might be not feasible, I mean, it will not come at once from the regional to this, maybe it is a state, uh, stage wise. Maybe they will start with the regional hospitals, uh, they will go down to, to, to district hospitals and maybe at the level of the health centers. And I'm sure they will not introduce any, any new uh, care without uh, um, orienting the staffs about the common issues. So what out, I'm sure the government will take care of that. I'm not a spokesperson for the government, but just a critical as a critical thing, I'm sure the government will all this training and, and, and orientation to ICU care will be will be conducted. For that one, I'm sure there's no way they can introduce an ICU, the regional hospital, the district hospital, without training the staffs, without having all the sophisticated equipment and all the essential uh, consumables and drugs, whatever. So I'm sure this one will come just less because I mean um cautious and then everything gonna be okay. Yes, Rebecca. Thank you, uh, Dr. Saria. Just for the addition, uh, yes, there are some plans about that and uh, they have, uh, there are some training which has been organized. I think they will start soon, next month, but they are short training. And I, I'm sure I've, I've seen the content of that short training uh, is not that much exhaustive so probably the, the might need be need of ongoing uh, training, even on job training later on. So the, four, the, the training is for four weeks, but it's very short. 
and the, the content is not that much covered. They just cover the basic thing, things which uh, they need to know, the equipment, the ABC about ICU. But uh, there, 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 must, there must be a plan. I think it, it, be, it will come later about the long-term plan or for the training about the staff being taken care of those patients out there from the regional to the district. Thank you. Hello, Saria. Yes, Nauliza, kuna mtu anaswali tena. We have only six minutes remaining. Kama kuna mtu anaswali, ana kitu anataka kushare, undo muda. Kama hakuna, basi, we can call it a day. But before doing so, I would like to appreciate all of you participants. Ambao metenga muda yenu kuwa na sisi kwa siku ya leo. Kwa kweli likuwa a very productive days. Tumeona namba kubwa ya yeah, yeah, participants uh, from different parts of the country, and especially gratitude goes to Dr. Namala Mpok. You see, to have a senior uh, consultant at this uh, session, for us, it was very, uh, very, very good. And maybe in the future, we'll, have, we'll give a slot to talk more about the pediatric issues. So, Dr. Namala, to people approach, please don't hesitate. Saria, what chat Okay, 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 Lakini tunapokuja kwenye ishu ya hizi kesi ambazo zimekuja very ambulant, especially kwa chakati department, tunapata changamoto sana, ususa ni tunapokuwa tunanza ku, ku optimize na mwisho wa siku changamoto tuzo kulonazo kuni upatikanaji wa monitors. So, tunapokuja kwenye eneo hili, nafikiri muna accessibility kubwa sana kuweza kutusaidia as a part of anathetisti ambao tunapata na shida ususa nitapo taka tukamilishe kalibia kila kitu ili kuweza ku fight against life threatening ya uh, wa wagonjwa wetu. So, mefurai kuona kwamba tunapata baadhi ya updates ya mba tunaziona hapa na vitu vya ziada and uh, then tuone kwenye recommendation tunaweke as a team but uh, the problem is some of requirements, especially monitors and, uh, and uh, ECG huko tunapata changamoto sana. Asante. Kwanza okay asante sana. Kwanza nikupongeze niku kwamba pamoja na changamoto hizo lakini bado amkata tamaa kuendelea kuwahudumia hao wa Tanzania. Lakini yeah. naamini kabisa kwa policy za serikali yetu na jinsi wadau wana wanachilia mkazo. Naamini hivi vitu vyote ambavyo tunaviona ni, 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 ni impossible kuonavyo katika level of style za wilaya. Hello. Dr. Saria, Saria, regions the country. Probably not. Okay, thank you. Ah, 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 lakini uh -huh. uh, yes. kwenye government facility ndio tunapata changamoto yes. and seems like watumiaji uh, yes, yes. ta, nini ndo hawaja hawajaonekana kuwa wana recommend kwa hiyo inakosa uh -huh. uh, yeah. so, shida ni kwamba tu sisi wenyewe ambao tunataka kuwa users ndio hatufahamu yes. na kwa sababu watu bado hawaja refresh kwenye kwenye literature kwa tunapata changamoto na namna hiyo we need to get out of our comfort zone, to talk about your comfort zone yet to transit to recommend a bit of the appropriate na to give us a couple of other products in a side year sana that compose the easy contamination. I really appreciate it, Okama. 
So probably that means this basema kwa kwenye comfort zone manake ni sisi wenyewe tuanze to change perception as a user thank you for that. Thank you. So I think uh, Dr. Saria is still having a challenge with uh, network, but either way, nothing has been uh, broken down that much. Uh, on behalf of Dr. Saria, I would like to thank everyone. Uh, the session was quite great, exhaustive, but I believe and I hope that everybody at least has got something. I believe which is great for us. Learning is a staging process. Uh, be it in the theater, I see you, you are allowed to contact us anytime. And uh, other than that, I would like to thank all the panelists who were in there, Stia himself, uh, Dr. Rebecca there, and the organizers, as well as one of our senior, senior, senior consultants as you have been in there, Dr. Namara. We thank you for your participation and all of your uh, now, Kevin, I think there's nothing much from our side. I'm taking back the mic to you to finish up uh, the session. Thank you so much, Dr. Gibbons. The session was a very good learning session. So we've reached the end of our session today. And just some few items to remember. You can visit the Learning Resource Center to access all these presentations, slides, and recordings that were presented during the session and many other additional resources such as quizzes, case exercises, and video through this link. Mm -hmm. And the link this will be shared after the session by email. You can also join our community WhatsApp group where we'll share the links as well. Or you can, you can send a message to, to assist through this number for assistance to join to the WhatsApp group. So we thank you so much. Remember to join us for the next session, session seven which is going to be on the 25th of March, 2022. And we are going to be discussing on defining acute respiratory distress syndrome. So remember March 25th, this March we, are, we, we had two sessions. And so on 25th, we're going to have another one. If you have any question, you can send your question through email at equatassistinternational.org. Thank you so much and see you in the next session. A co India team, I think we can close the session. You can end the session from your end. Thank you. Thank you all. A lovely weekend over there. Thank you, Dr. Rebecca. Okay.